Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll show you how you can easily control the 4x4 matrix switcher using the included remote control, the buttons on the front of the unit, or the software package available from O-Ray. Now even though all three of these methods allow you to very easily select any one of your media input devices and send that to a specific output display, or even all four displays at the same time, each of them provide different features and benefits. For example, the remote control is the quickest way to select one of the inputs and send it to an output, but it doesn't provide a lot of advanced functionality beyond that. If you use the buttons on the front of the unit, you get a deeper level of programming and configuration steps that you can control. And if you move to the software, you get a lot more advanced functionality where you can actually do things like send one input to all four monitors simultaneously, stitch them together into a gigantic video wall, or even set up different rotations of inputs being displayed on outputs based on timing. So the software is the most sophisticated way to go, but if you're looking for an easy way to control it, the remote is really the answer. So I'll start there. So the remote is divided into four different sections. There's output A, output B, output C, and D. Now the way I've got this set up is I've got output A, output B, output C, and output D, and I've got four different inputs that are directed to those outputs right now. But for example, if I want to change the input that's going to that output A, I can pick a different input. So let me switch it to number two, and you can see that it switches pretty quickly. Now if I want to switch it to three, I hit it again, it moves to three. I can change input number two by dropping down to output two here and change that to maybe input number three. And you can see it changes. Now I can go back to output A, put that back on one, put this back on two. So this gives you a really quick way to access both the inputs and the outputs and make those changes on the fly, but there's not a lot more you can do with the remote. If you need more control, you can use the buttons on the front of the unit. And here again, you can set up input versus output. So the top up here is output, the bottom is input. So if I want to change the display in number one, I would tap output number one, whatever input I want, and then hit the take button. So for example, let's say I want to change that to input number three and hit take and it'll switch it. Now that's pretty similar to what's going on with the remote control, but what makes this really powerful is that I can actually program it as well. So I can save any one of the scenes that I've set up as a mode and I can save up to eight of those and I can save them using the save button and I can recall them using the recall button, which makes it really nice if you're in the field and you've got given patterns of input versus output that you use on a regular basis, you can save those to the internal programming here and recall them up with a couple of button touches. So a lot more functionality there than you can actually control with the remote control. You can also adjust resolutions for the input and the output. So you've got resolutions for the output and E did to set up the input resolution. So you can adjust it as needed to accommodate any of your media sources against any of your displays. And those can be different for each one of those four inputs and four outputs. If you go to the software, you get a lot more functionality and I'll show you that now. So let me actually start up the program here. And when you first start up the program, it'll actually come up and ask you for access. It'll say, please log in because it's got security built into it. I'm logging in as administrator and the default password for that is six ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll hit login and it brings me to the switch. Now I've already set this up. You have a couple of ways you can access the switch. I've got it set up on my network. So I've got this connected to my local network here and I'm accessing the same network over Wi-Fi here. I actually had to change the IP address because the default IP address is 192.168.0.247. I changed that because it's on my network to 192.168.1.247. And then once I search for the device, it found it, it connected to it. And the first thing it's gonna do when you connect to the device is talk to the switch and read all the current settings that are set up, and that's what it's showing you here. So let me enlarge the display. It will start in the upper left-hand corner. You'll see a couple of tabs up there. Right now I'm on the main screen, which is called the matrix switch screen. Next to that is advanced switch, signal settings, fine-tune PQ, video wall, and network settings. The matrix switch screen is where you have a lot of control over the inputs versus the outputs. So for example, right now, across the top, you'll see input one, two, three, and four, and across the left, output one, two, three, and four. And you can see that all the lights are green, which is indicating I've got valid connections to input devices and output devices, and everything's working as it should. The blue boxes that you see there are the current selection. So for example, input one is going to output one, input two to output two, and so on. But I can switch those just by clicking on them. So let's say I want to send input number one to all four monitors. All I do is click output two, output three, and output four. And there you go. I've got the same input on all four monitors. I can even flip them. So let me do this. Now I've got, I've got them reverse. So I've got input one here and input four over there. So it's a really quick way for you to switch between your inputs and your outputs using the screen. And if you're doing this in a network setting, you can be very far away from the switch matrix and control this remotely, which is really nice. So down the bottom, 
I can set all the inputs to number one. I can set all the inputs to any input I want. So if I want to make sure all the monitors have the same input, let me turn them all on to input number two. And you can see they move to input number two. So it gives you a lot of control very quickly with a couple of mouse clicks to make the changes you need. Now let's say that's a mode that I use all the time and I want to save that so I can recall it quickly later on. To do that, I simply click on Save As. I choose what mode I want to save it as. Again, I can save up to eight of these different modes or scenes. I'll call it Mode 2 because I've got input number two going all to the display. So in my head, that makes sense. So let me save that. Now I'll reset it to the original setup where I've got each input going to each output correctly. And if I want to recall Mode 2, all I have to do is tap the Recall button and then pick the mode I want to recall, mode number two, and load it. That's it. Now what it's doing is it's remembering what I had set up as mode two, and it brought up those same four displays. And we're ready to go. So now I'm going to go back to the original settings, and we'll move on to the next tab. All right, the advanced switch settings allow you to set up timing programs where you can have multiple inputs sent to multiple outputs at given intervals. So you can imagine if you're setting this up in a big display somewhere, maybe at certain times during the day, you'd want to have different inputs directed to those displays, either stitched or non-stitched. You can do that right here. So you select which input you want to have connected to which output. And then you basically set up the timing from there and you start it. And it'll actually switch through different inputs to the outputs on a regular cadence based on your timing in there. The next tab is called Signal Settings, and that's where you can make adjustments for the resolution and frame rates of your media input devices, as well as your output displays. And it's very important you get those set correctly because you can actually have four different monitors with different resolutions and frame rates, as well as four different media devices with different resolutions again. And making the adjustments here allows the matrix switcher to understand exactly what it's doing and how it can display those different resolutions. And you can make those adjustments on the front of the unit through the buttons, but it's a lot easier to do it here with a point and click solution. So you can actually go through and choose your input format. It already knows that there's HDMI connections made to the unit. You can use the read all button, which will go through and actually read those and determine what the input is for each of those four inputs, what the resolution is and what the frame rate is. And then you've got the output section on the right, where again, you can read them all. And what it's doing now is pinging all four displays to check the ultimate resolution they can display and making an auto adjustment based on that reading. You can also decide not to use the audio that comes through with the HDMI stream. So for example, on input number one, you may have a game console, but want to blend some music. And on top of that, if you go to this page on the left, you can actually see where it says audio select, and you have different four different input selections there. So if I go to the first one, I can externally inject audio over top of the audio that would be coming through on the HDMI stream. It's a great way for you to blend high quality audio with a video stream if you have to mix those two together, and the unit will actually blend those to the output. The next tab is labeled Fine Tune PQ, and it's an interesting one because it allows you to remotely adjust some of the parameters of each of the four displays. Because remember, you're passing HDMI through the switcher and it can actually enhance that video somewhat. So on this screen, you can adjust brightness, contrast, saturation, which is color saturation, and sharpness of the output display. You can also read it. So let's read it. I'm on output number one. You can see there are four different outputs there, but I'll read output number one, and they're all at about 50%. Now I can actually crank those up. Let me crank up the brightness to 97%. And you can see how bright that got. That doesn't look really good. So let me take that back down to a reasonable number. Somewhere around 50% would be fine. There we go, 50%. But you can crank up the contrast and you can upgrade the saturation to a much more saturated picture if you want. And you can increase the sharpness. What's so nice about that is if you're using four different monitors or maybe a monitor that's a little bit older that can't really get the brightness you're looking for, you have adjustments in here through the matrix switcher that can compensate for older monitors or maybe monitors that are different manufacturers that have different color schemes to them. All right, the next one is the video wall setup. And this is one of my favorite tabs because this screen allows you to actually create a large video wall from any of the inputs. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the video wall settings up top, and I've got two by two, which means you can see that it's set up with all four screens, and I can blend those together, picking any input I want. So if you right-click on one of the screens, you can select which input you want. Let's say we're gonna go with input number two. All right, so that's set on screen number one, and it just changed, so it's input number two. Now, if I wanna blend that or stitch that across the other screens, I can actually drag it across all four screens and they'll light up blue like that. Now, it hasn't stitched it yet, but it has switched it to all four screens. So it's taken that input number two, which was screen one, and made all the screens the same. If you right click at that point and say screen stitching, it'll go through a process and stitch them together and give you one gigantic display. If you wanna undo that, you right click on it again, 
and click cancel stitching and it'll actually bring them back. Now it leaves them on input number two, so you can go back and you can reset those to, uh, let's see, input number one, input number three, another quick way to actually select the inputs, input number four. And it puts them back to the original settings. Now what I like about this again is that you can actually make it a one by two, you can make it a two by two, it's completely up to you how you want to do it, but sliding these across, you can see how it changes. Let me set it. There I've got two vertically, and if I go the other direction, one by two, and set it, now I've got two horizontal. So I can actually stitch it across the two. So here's screen number one, and I'll drag that across. Now they're both highlighted, and I'll say screen stitching. It goes through the process and actually stitches it across the top. Now, that looks terrible because it's set up for a 16.9 display, but if you had the right graphics, you could actually see how you can have two different displays on the bottom, and you can switch those out at will, and one large display across the top. So this screen gives you an awful lot of control over exactly how your displays are being set up. Let me cancel the stitching, put this back to input number two, and this back to input number one. Okay, we're good. Then the last tab is the Network Settings tab, and this is where you can actually make adjustments if you need to. Now, I've set this up again, being on a LAN network here, where I've actually changed the IP address and nailed it, like I said, to the 192.168.1.247. But this is a great place for you to go out and search for devices if you need to find them when you first set up the unit. You can select ports if you're going to do a direct connection between it. You won't need to use this page that much. The other tabs are really the ones that you're going to have to spend a lot of time with. And again, if you go back to the main page, like I'm looking at right now, you can select between network, or UART. So for example, I'm connected over the network right now. That's why I've got network selected and I've nailed the IP address. You can do a direct connection from a PC to the back of the LAN port. And in that case, you would do direct connect over UART. So the control mode would change a little bit. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the software. Now, there are other functions and features that are explained a little bit more in depth in the manual, but that's the basic understanding of how to use the software. And like I'd mentioned at the top of this explanation, really simple way to make your selections, a little bit more involved, a little bit more programmability ultimate programmability over here. So my suggestion is if you're using this product, especially on a regular basis, always do it through the software. It just makes things a lot easier, a lot quicker, and you have a lot more control and it's easier to see exactly what's going on. I hope you found this video helpful. The O-Ray 18 gig 4x4 matrix switcher is the perfect way of controlling all of your media content. It allows you to very quickly select from up to four HDMI media input sources and send that selected media to a single monitor or all four output monitors at the same time. You can do that using the included remote control, the buttons on the front of the unit, or for advanced programmability, the software that's available from O-Ray will allow you to create a gigantic video wall by stitching together all four monitors from a single input source. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks again for watching.